Michael Myers' Infinite Tier 3 add-on, the Fragrant Tuft of Hair, is always considered by newer players to be an unbeatably strong add-on. With it, once Michael Myers hits Tier 3 of his power, all of his attacks for the rest of the match will down survivors in a single hit, even if they're at full health. In reality, though, having Infinite Tier 3 is actually a downside against good survivors. You see, as a killer, you want survivors to always be doing something other than working on generators, and the time that survivors spend healing is time that they spend occupied. A standard heal takes two survivors and weighs 16 seconds of time for both of them. If the killer has Infinite Tier 3, however, competent survivors will not spend any time healing each other, since you can just down them in one shot anyway, effectively forcing them to play optimally and rush gens, while also putting more effort into staying aware of the killer and running early enough to not be ambushed. Now, survivors effectively permanently injured would still be pretty useful, except as Myers, you're basically sacrificing your entire power to have that effect, leaving you as just a basic M1 killer against an injured survivor most of the time, and good survivors can run M1 killers for ages. In addition to that, you don't start out Tier 3. You need to not only stalk a survivor long enough to get out of Tier 1 as before, but then you need to stalk a survivor twice as long as normal to go from Tier 2 to Tier 3. And during that stalk, you're basically standing in place and not interacting with survivors. Hopefully I've explained this well enough to you to help you reconsider using it. If you still got your heart set on making it work, however, there are still some builds you can use with it to shore up its downsides. For our game today, we're going to be using a build that's designed to replace the slowdown lost from the lack of healing with a combination of passive slowdown and totem cleansing. Corrupt Intervention is probably our most important perk, locking down the three farthest gens from our spawn location for two minutes or until the first survivor is downed. With less gens to work on, survivors will be forced to come to us and give us valuable time to stalk them. Surge damages generators in a radius around us whenever we down a survivor with a basic attack. Even in Tier 3, all of our attacks are considered basic attacks, and this perk will not only regress nearby gens, but will save us from needing to spend time kicking them. Our third perk is Hex Plaything, which will light a totem the first time each survivor is hooked. While lit, that survivor won't hear a tear radius, and as they're vulnerable from Tuft of Hair, they're in a very risky position if they don't cleanse it. Remember though, we want them to cleanse that totem. Time spent cleansing is time not on a generator. Hex Penimento, our final perk, punishes them for doing that cleanse. With this perk, we can relight each cleanse totem once, to get a stack that remains while that lit totem remains. The first stack is the most important, slowing down repair speeds, so even if survivors spend even more time cleansing these relit totems, it'll be fairly easy to keep that first, most important stack up. The Fragrant Tuft of Hair may be an overrated add-on, but can we still make good use out of it? Well, there's one way to find out. Area Crows, huh? Definitely not a killer friendly map. Let's see what we can do though. Uh, Corrupt Intervention is looking pretty good on it right now though. Those three gens are way in the corner there. It'd be really hard for us to defend. Let's break open this door to the main building. I'm assuming that they spawn somewhere in this area. Uh, let's check this gen. No, I don't see anybody. I assume they spawn by these uh, black gens, but I don't want to waste time in there. It'll just make the perk useless. So let's stay on this side of the map, at least for the moment. And it looks like three of them are here. So let's get off whatever stock we can. And that's nice, we get into tier one right there. Now because our tier three downs in a single hit, there's not a ton of points in uh, damaging them early. So I'm going to be rushing tier 3 as fast as possible. Uh, that being said, we don't want them to know that we have infinite tier 3. So if we have a good opportunity to get a basic hit in, yeah, I'm just going to take it just like that. Myers with infinite tier 3 often won't injure survivors at all. So survivors who get injured against one, they might think that we don't actually have it, and they might waste time healing later on. I'm gonna leave her here. 
Uh, I want Corrupt Intervention to stay up as long as possible. So let's pressure these survivors that still have full health and still can be stalked. See, she's running all the way down here. Should be only the one pallet. No, she's running back. Hmm. Okay, I don't quite have enough from her, I don't think. But I think there's somebody here, too. Okay, this is perfect. Let's get Shack Pellet out of the way. She's not trying to run Shack at all. She's just running away. Hmm. There should be a couple of safe pallets in this area here. Okay, she's just gonna throw the pallets and run. So we have a classic Windows of Opportunity gamer here. Doesn't know how to loot, just knows how to run from pallet to pallet. Let's give her a little chase right now. Wow, teabagging, huh? Ooh, I'm so insulted. Looks like they have the first gen done. I don't think I can get her here. Okay, Corrupt Intervention is officially gone. Let's... Oh, wait a minute. Where the heck did she go? She was right here. And there are no scratch marks anywhere. Okay, you know what? I'm just, I'm just gonna leave. Oh, hi! Oh, here's a nice consolation prize. Well, there she is. How did she get all the way over there? Well, it doesn't matter. We'll hook her, get our first stack of plaything. I'm sorry, first lit totem for plaything. She's gonna run in the main building. I don't want to chase in the main building, but uh, she's gonna go upstairs. This should work out. There's only the one pallet there on the right. I don't think there's anything down here all the time. Yeah, so she's just running to a dead end. Get a couple good surge procs. And I should be able to get her to a hook pretty easily. In fact, this one's right here. Okay, up you go. Let's get back to that gen that they were working on. And you see, if you look, they already healed. Uh, so they probably don't know I have infinite tier 3 quite yet. They're going to realize at any second when uh, I don't actually lose a tier 3. But getting that early uh, hidden, I think, was the key to wasting a little bit more of their time. Okay, I'm hide my red stain for a bit. She's just going to keep running, okay. So she's got nowhere to go here. And that thing already wasted a bunch of pallets in the middle, so I know this middle area is going to be a big dead zone now. It's kind of the danger of just running and dropping pallets. You kind of screw over your whole team in the long run. Where are you going? Ooh, this is lucky. Looks like one of the survivors cleansed that totem over there. So now I should be able to down her and light this totem at the same time. Fortunately, she gets to this in time. But if I break it from this side, she's got nowhere that she can run. Okay, ooh, and there's a survivor right here. Let's pretend to pick up. And I see he was waiting to get that flashlight safe. I love when survivors bring flashlights. Imagine if you had had a toolbox and was sitting on a gen instead. Oh well. Okay, now is a good opportunity to light that totem. And let's see if we can find where she is. She's just waiting here. And there's a hook in this corner, which is nice. Okay, that's a, another plaything. Now, I don't want to go too far out of this area. I'm not only guarding two hooks, but I'm also guarding two totems. One right here, right behind me. Uh, but at the same time, I can't stay too close to them, because I don't want to give them the anti-camp. 
which would let them unhook themselves if I stayed by them too, for too long. So I'm towing a fine line here. Oh, okay, well, I'm just going to unhook, sure. You're towing a fine line where uh, you want to keep pressure on them, but you don't want to keep too much pressure. Looks like that they just ran instead of going for the second unhook. Oh, she's right here, huh? Yeah, I had a feeling you were going to try to vault back into me. Don't forget, this is the one who was teabagging. Okay, let's look around. I don't see anybody over here. Okay, here's our injured guy. And they just cleansed the totem instead of going for one of the two hooked survivors. That is very good for us. And they were going for a second totem? Why would you try to cleanse all these totems? I'm gonna relight this. And you know what? I don't want to chase... I'm not going to chase her in check. That pallet's already gone, but I want to interrupt these unhooks if I can. Okay, so I can interrupt that first one. I can definitely stop the second, though. And she touches her, giving rid of her borrowed time effect. Probably not her best move there. Okay, and he sneakily snuck around. Okay. He goes down. Yeah, I see you. You want to vault that window, get rid of that borrowed time? So I can grab you? Want to do it? Come on. Thanks. I swear, survivors. Oh, and you're here too. Why are you just making this easy for me? You know, the goal of me playing this game was to show off the weakness of this add-on, but I mean, when survivors kind of pull this kind of thing, uh, you know, there's not much I can do but win. Oh well, that was fun at least. And up you go too. Now I'm going to point out here that while our build helped us a lot, their real weakness here was just how badly they played. See, instead of uh, taking the time to actually try to loot me around some of those very strong pallets in the middle, he just ran and tossed them. And then when I finally got it down in a corner, he was so fixated on getting that flashlight save that he couldn't see that it threw the game by trying it. Oh well. While you can certainly still win with it, the fragrant tuft of hair puts you at too much of a disadvantage against good survivors. I would have liked a little bit of a longer match to show this off properly, but with the atrocious queue times for killer right now, it's a little bit harder on my limited free time. Now with the 2v8 ending soon, I'm sure those queue times will improve though. Also we finally hit 500 subscribers and I'd like to thank everyone who has watched me this far and everyone new to my videos too. Thank you for your continued support.